Hey, uh, good to have you guys here. If this thing ends up posting, you guys give it a view. My name is Judd Kime. Uh, I'm in my 17th year here at Pacific Lutheran University, way out here in Tacoma, Washington, the, you know, the left coast, best coast. Yeah, beautiful Northwest. Um, fun to talk some ball here. I know we're all going through a very unique time. Uh, the earth is off access a little bit here and shifting paradigms and when we're all going to get a chance to actually coach football this fall, what that looks like, and mitigations and and I know our conference, I think pretty much all of Division Three football now, we're an NCAA Division Three program here called the Northwest Conference. Some of you may have heard of Linfield College. They've been on the national scene for years. Uh, the Lutes have been there. We've been in eight national championship games, won four. Um, so a lot of great football here in the Northwest, but I know all those Midwest guys, especially you guys there in Ohio, there's some pretty special football at all levels there. Now, anyway, so been here for 17 years, defensive coordinator. I uh, posted a tape here about some off-season planning, and Nick asked me to touch base a little bit on some special team stuff. We, we committed to uh, the Shield punt. I know it's kind of everybody's, uh, you know, favorite America's punt formation right now. First time I saw it was years ago in Florida, and Urban Meyer was doing it. I'm going, that's a pretty unique way to do it. And, and then a good friend of mine who at, at the time was the – special teams coordinator for I think he was with the Edmonton Eskimos then and then he was with Montreal and they won the Grey Cup and uh, if you know or not in the CFL special teams is a flat circus <laughs> you got you can't have more than x amount of Americans or non-Canadians on the field and you've only got three down so your punt and punt returns are barely get their breath and they're back on the field and kick coverage and funky rules. If you don't return the ball out of the end zone that you give up a point, I mean, it's a crazy deal. But anyways, what I'm getting to is, you know, I've been uh, back in my early career. Um, we were, you know, as everybody was a pro punt, just build the horseshoe and a zone side, man side, or zone it up, or it depends on numbers in the box where the balance is a four and four deal or a five and five with a single returner and, how you set your protection and kick slide, kick slide, make your stand, get two for one on one side. And, and uh, anyway, so as I started learning more about the shield punt, I realized how doggone easy it is. And it's easy to teach. The, the concept is simple. Uh, the protection system, which I think is unique to a little bit what we do here at PLU. So uh, I, I'm going to give this up knowing that maybe some of our conference teams and they'll figure out how to scheme it, but I haven't seen it yet. Uh, so I'll go through this, but I'll say this, uh, you know, I was a long time D coordinator, defensive guy. So I've always kind of dabbled, in, if not coordinator in charge of special teams, uh, took that on really in 2010. And we had, we kind of just piecemealed as some staffs do, you know, guys have certain segments of special teams and then position coaches help out, keep them busy, keep, keep some ownership there. But I said, well, you know, if I'm going to move to offense and help out there and be the run game coordinator, coach those running backs, and and I'm going to I'm going to truly coordinate special teams. So for me, it was, and as as I would encourage, and I know all of us, you know, the three phases, but it's always kind of offense, defense, and then the stepchild of special teams. And to get your head coach sold on that and and sell that from day one, you think of coaches when they're speaking to the team, the impact of and win this phase and win this win this phase, you win two of the three, you got a shot to win the game. I said, but you always have to talk highlights of the one rep max opportunity of what special teams can do. You're going to flip field position. You're going to gain or maintain uh, game momentum, just the ebb and flow of it, get big mo back on your goal line based on or your goal posts, or you got a shot here to put points on the board. And, and it's a one rep opportunity. So, uh, that's a point of emphasis to bring that back again to me, the way the tsunami of special teams and coordinators and full staffs, NFLs have four or five guys now as the special team coordinating or the special team staff is crazy, but it tells you how important it is. So I just put this up. This is a little bit of our philosophy statement. Uh, it's the first team meeting of the year after we get through testing and all that type of stuff. Everybody's in the room, all 110 ish guys. And they're hearing about the impact of, you know, the O-line guys, because they'll, they'll probably be, you know, PAT field goal guys and 
maybe a shield dude dude on punt, but we've kind of gone with the more athletic defensive end linebacker type kids. They got to get downfield and coverage and long field. But just this for me just set the tone. And it is a one rep max opportunity relates to their, their off season conditioning and how that goes. And, you know, how many times you bench 215, eight times equates to whatever, 250 is a bench, but your one rep max would be this. This is your one opportunity here to get it right, do your job, get it done, hold protection, cover it down, seal it up, okay? Possible big play, drop ball, scoop and score, get it, you know, block a punt. You know, you you uh, you block a field goal, a scoop and score, a run and in. Now you kick it off, you get them in deep field. I mean, it's the impact though. I think we all know this stuff. But this, to me, was kind of laying this out. Uh, we call our special teams the slice crew. Uh, it's fun, and they get some identity with that. You got your offensive rock stars, defensive rock stars, but we have our slice crew rock stars. Because there's always about three or four kids that end up showing up on punt, punt coverage, kick coverage, kick return. Maybe they're a wing kid or a holder on a, on a PAT field goal, the score team. But... Uh, you got those dudes too. We recognize them. You know, I've seen all these special team chains and all that. We call it the dude, the dude of the week. Uh, so, and that's a big honor. You know, we, we Instagram that, we Twitter that, you know, who gets the dude of the week. And then as the season goes on, we got nine guys uh, and they become the legion of dude. <laughs> they love it. Anyway, that's kind of just setting the tone here how important it is and rock and roll. This kind of speaks to that. We're looking for guys who play at superior speed. They're fearless. Uh, they're job one, their competency level. But this is this one rep max deal to unload it and get it done here in this deal is kind of what I'm going through here. Uh, then we lay up a little bit of our special team uh, 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 goals. We're not a big stat thing around here in analysis. We certainly are as coaches, but this gives them perspective. Uh, we've named each of our units, our Bravehearts, our kick coverage team. Uh, and how we handle that inside shoulder force, compress the deal, reduce the field down, try to locate the ball and send, you know, all 22 into the same spot and wreak havoc, hard hat area and rock and roll. The rat squad, our kick return deal. We've got a really nice system. If any of you coaches want to call me about that, I still do kick return right now. Now I'll say this, this past season, we sucked. <laughs> now, that's not funny, but uh, our system of how we do it, all the different lanes we can get into and our directional returns and middle return and our traps and, and um, um, just a multitude of ways out of a different system. I know we're, we're a pretty tough team to cover down because all the things that we can do with it have been pretty good at it. But the pride team, that's our punt team. And we've been exceptional, in my opinion, four or five, the last seven, eight years, we've been top five, top 10 nationally in net net returns now we're only seeing about one out of five balls that's actually returned but you can see i threw a couple numbers in here this is net return of 4.5 2.1 6.2 11.8 that's a tough year but i think there's only seven returns that year and one of them got us a little bit didn't score that got a long one so that blows up your stats on a number of returns 3.4 there was a, there's a 1.2 3.5 uh, in, 18, in 17, we had 40 punts in nine games. Only 11 were returned for 39 yards. So that's, that's pretty good stuff. Not all about that kind of stuff, but gives you an idea. And kids kind of take some pride on that and, and rock and roll. I think it was LSU a year or two ago. They didn't have one punt return on them, not one. So that's your, your punter's ability to put it up there and hang it. And you, you got, you know, your 4-3, four, 4-2 four, and 4-3 guys because <laughs> you got seven gunners on the field and, shield punt uh, it's a little tough to catch it and have the time to get your motor going and get north and south on it anyways and then we've had some awesome uh fakes off uh, our punt deal uh, i'm not going to give you the code word but we have some code words with that and dummy words but when it's on it's uh, we we've hit we've hit some big plays on that that's uh, you know kind of down and distance and situational and it just feels right and we've had head coaches here like yeah man do your thing it's special teams rock and rolls whatever you want to do Okay, man, but there's always that. If it doesn't work, we don't look very good. So anyway, that's happened too. Our Sharks is our punt return and then uh, what we've called Kind Time, uh, which is a little play on my last name. 
our, our big old line dudes were like, hey, man, we got pride and shark and rat. We don't have a name for, you know, field goal PAT, the score team. And one of the kids came up with, well, how about time time? What time is it? Time time. So we always called up time time. Uh, we knew we were talking about the field goal PAT crew. We've been pretty solid there. And, and the OK kickers, those doggone kickers. But you got to love them up, man. It's points on the board, baby. Live the dream. Get it up there and split the pipes. Okay. So let's get into the, the shield punt. So I'm going to kind of come from a place that most of us sort of know what this is and the multiple formations, uh, you know, the personnel thing on this, you've got seven plus what I'll say rock stars on the field, you know, athletic DB wide receiver types. Uh, believe me when I, when we talk about hot technique, Step flat, gain ground, shut the door. Step flat, gain ground, shut the door. Just that one action. If I'm stepping to my right, so I'm pushing left. So I'm mentally weighting my inside of my left foot. I'm pushing right. And and knowing there's an element that I have to block that's off my outside edge or I'm a right guard and there's a guy in the B gap and I got to get some stretch and get to him. It's crazy how athletic kids, college, our guys, small college guys, but athletic kids can't do it. They can't do it. They, they, they want to drop, drop hip, open the gate, give them the efficient angle of the vector line, which completely defeats the purpose of what we're trying to do. So I, I, I'm, what I'm saying is you got to find kids that understand this step flat. You're, you're basically trying to break stride, get this guy off angle, and that's it. And then you're out. Widen, locate, compress, inside shoulder force to the return element and get it done. But Obviously, it all starts with protection. So I'll say this, guys. I mean, this is the base formation. Okay, We have six-foot splits on the right side or the kick side. That'll be the overprotected or the plus one side for protection. And the back side, we ske- squeeze it down a little bit where we go to five-footers. But you got to understand, however this all lays out for you or how many guys you split or get into unbalanced, you, know, you got to be obviously – uh, eligible. You got to add your seven eligibles up on the line of scrimmage. We do back them off as much as we can. They're in two point stances squared up. You know, their helmets got to sp- split the hips of the center. I think that's the same rule in high school, but obviously the, the rush kids cannot get past the tip of the football. So you got a little, almost a yard of to grab an angle in there. You're not nose to nose, you know, that kind of deal. So the guards set the table on this, <coughs> and then everybody lines up toe to toe on a straight line to where the guards are aligned. So I know that we're doing it right when the sideline judge, hey, you need to move your punt team up a little bit. They're they're barely eligible. All right, guys, we're doing it right. Okay, so but what I was getting to is the concept in this whole protection deal is distance equals time. You got to understand that, guys. Distance equals time. So if you lay out this whole formation, you got these big mega six, seven foot splits, five, six foot splits on the backside. I'll just say the left side as you're looking at this. And you put kids in B gaps and C gaps on the rush to try to get to a launch point, you know, that nine yard point behind the middle brick, you almost can't get there. If even if they're not touched and we start telling our guys, if you wiggle out and they wiggle out, keep doing it keep doing it. We'll learn off the first punt. Is he, is he on a, a return cover down hold up technique or is he on the rush? But either way, he's being coached to align in this B gap or three technique, whatever you want to call it as a, a B gap hit on this. Or they load up those a gaps, which feeds the protection in my opinion. Um, so I don't want to be jumping around here, but distance equals time so if you have a snapper that can get it back there i mean obviously the nfl style is about a 0.7 uh from snap to catch 0.8 is sort of the golden rule our kid right now is about a 0.88 0.9 guy and then your get off okay so your punter's got about a one two one three you know if he's a read the laces look at me look at my nice little ballet steps uh, that you can't do this dude because we've got to be The golden rule is about 2.2 second on snap to get off. Okay, so I I put it at 2.1, but I know as a special teams coordinator, if we're going against a team that's a 2-2, 2-3, 2-4 type team, holy smokes, we're going to come get this cat. We're going to—they're giving us—they're—they're allowing us the time 
to get there and go block this dog. And we've been blessed with good get off punters. Uh, their punting ability is okay. <laughs> hey, just give me that 38 yarder, man. We'll cover it down and he'll fair catch it. We'll put the buzz on it and fit it up and leverage it. And we're, we're all good. Just get it out. I'm way more concerned about get off than how far you kick the ball, dog on it. But uh, so if, if you can get this ball off in 2.1 ish, and I know maybe in high school that this might move up a little bit because the ability of the snapper and you may have a position guy or a true skills kid. That's just your punter. Usually I know even us, you know, as a backup, wide receiver kid or backup quarterback or whoever it is that punted some like, dude, you're our best punter. We have a little kind of punt deal. We got old line guys and backup linebacker guys and they all think and they shank it. You're out, get out of here. Go take a lap. You know, have, we have a little fun with it. And then you find out, whoa, our starting free safety can stink and boom it. Now we're not going to give you the full-time job. We're going to keep it with our punter guy, but we get in a bind. We're on the road with less numbers you're our emergency, you know, uh, emergency case and get you back there and catch it and kick it. So anyways, that's what I'm getting to. Distance equals time. You have to understand that because some kids will get just a little sliver of their blocking assignment. Some kids will get a good piece of it and knock them off. Some kids will ex ex absolutely blow it and not get a piece of this and let this guy get scot free. He's that little wiggly bend his body at speed, dude. And he's like, whoa, he's almost untouched. But if your punter catches the ball and steps himself into the middle brick of the shield, it's almost impossible to get under the edge of the outside bricks, bend that angle, or as we call it, the vector, or almost a right angle to get to the launch point, you're going to be okay. Now, I don't really tell the kids that because I want you to protect, step flat, shut the door, Hot, what we call hot technique, hands-on torso, and we're out. We're out into coverage and coverage lanes and that whole deal. I'll get back to that. We don't really talk about coverage lanes. But great snap, good get off, stay right through the middle brick, and we're going to get this dog out. Okay, I know our friends Linfield down there every year. It's usually about mid-second quarter, and we're in about – our own 35-ish, all right, here they come. The, the purple guys are coming, and we know it. They do it every year, doggone it. Coach Smith might be watching this. You load those A-gaps up and bodies up. You don't cover up the tackles because you know they're ineligible anyways, and you bring numbers to the shield, and then we, we've schooled that punter up all week long. Just stay with your middle brick. Stay with your middle brick. We're going to hammer up. We're going to hold firm. We're going to, you know, Take, take the train and the teeth here, man, but we're going to hold ground in the middle. you got to have fearless, tough dudes in that shield because when they do bring it and they get that seven, eight yard full tilt, 40 timed coming right at your chest, you know, doggone at the crown deal. God bless the rules, people. You can't dive and, you know, Superman over the top of these things. That's an unsportsmanlike act. It's actually a 15 yard penalty on them because that's the way you, you know, what early before they had that role. Yeah. You got dudes got to give one up for the team and launch himself and try to, you know, close the chimney down on the launch path of the ball. Uh, and we got a couple doing that. Now that's illegal. Good. That's good. That's a good thing. Okay. So I'm jumping around. Let's go back to set. So our right side are what we call the kick side and the back side. Okay. Uh, inevitably, you know, you're always protecting the punter side. This is assuming you got a right footed punter. If you got a left footed punter, your kick side would be the left side. We set our protection on Rip Liz. So again, if you had a lefty, you'd be in probably Liz most of the year. Uh, we're in Rip most of the year for us. If we do get an overload to the left side on, in the number count of the protection, we'll check it, Liz, 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 and we're good. That happened to us, you know, game seven a couple of years ago down at Willamette. And I'm like, how are they off there? Man, we're barely getting these balls out because my – personal protector wasn't setting the protection as Liz Liz, which gives us one more hat to protect to that side because they're light to the kick side. So you got to, you know, work both sides here. Most teams are going to be sound, accountable, gap sound. I drew up on here. This is 10 up. Okay. So they got two in the kick side, a gap, one in the B gap, one in the C gap, one off the edge, you know, holding contain, get an edge to the defense in essence. Because this is obviously until the ball's kicked, still an offensive play on a fourth down. But uh, so again, squared up, 
Okay, toes on a line, off the LOS as much as we can legally. Again, your, your ear hole is covering the, the, the hips of the center. Right guard, right tackle, right, right tight end. We call him the tight end. Oftentimes, that tight end side, we'll, we'll split those guys out. If we're on a left hash right now, we'll go split right. So now we got a guy compressing from the field side. If we go overload right, now the left tight end comes over to the right side. So we only have a two-man surface on the backside. We'll go overload right, split right. So we'll get a three-man protection to the field plus a split player who's out, whatever, top of the numbers-ish. Okay, and we got all this stuff that's pushing the ball into the boundary side. But just keep in mind when you go overloads, again, it'd be this left tight end right here. We had him over here. You've only got two coverage elements to that side now. Okay, just, just be aware. Is we've got overload stuff automatic when we're backed up on our heels. Okay, but if we're on the right hash, it's always overload right. So we'd only have two guys at the field side. We got to account for that. Usually send our center, you know, oftentimes to that side rather than just to the nose of the of the returner. All right, so that's your set on the the kick side, uh, the back side. Now these are five foot splits, the same same concept. So you got this nice line right across seven up. These are athletic DB guys. Protect first out. You know we call it wide and locate compress. WLC wide and locate compress. Okay, so either on hold up or however it plays, you may get double teamed, whatever it is. But when you're out, okay, it's really just one beat. The ball snapped. You take your hot step, your protection step. And then you're out. Widen, locate, compress of the ball. Widen, locate, compress of the ball. But we don't talk a whole lot about coverage lanes. You are by design. He's six foot from him. He's six foot from him. You've already got lanes set up. And your right guard may get a little hold up, and he's out fast. You start getting layers and depth to the coverage deal. He might be five yards ahead. He's squeezing in on compression. He's out late. He naturally kind of gap exchanges and comes around outside of him you know never follow your own color all that kind of stuff we never talk about stay five yards apart you fit yourself to the near post you're at the hash you're inside the top of the numbers this all relates to where we've thumped the ball okay so as you're running down you widen and locate lo meaning the returner okay and then compress to him and then the next stage of that is you get down into we got to make a play time we call it isf inside shoulder force Okay, so if I'm a right side guy, I hold the ball to your left peck. If I'm a left side guy, I hold the ball to your right peck. Assuming we kick the ball right down the middle, perfect world, that's how this works. So it's widen, locate, compress. It's inside shoulder force. That's all we talk about. Again, guys, uh, contain, even from a defensive standpoint, rust lanes and heats and dogs and edge pressures, we never talk about contain. We want compression. We want to reduce surface. We want to scrape paint. We want to tighten everything down with leverage, with fits, okay? But it's inside shoulder force uh, and just hold the ball, but run yourself into that. And your focal point is the near peck to you or the returner, okay? Or the TV number, whatever you want to say. We call about near peck. Uh, we call that inside shoulder force, focal points near peck. The exact thing we're saying on kick coverage, the exact thing we're saying on defensive fits. It all fits up when these guys start hearing common terms. Uh, every year I'll have one or two of these are receiver guys, and they're like, what, what, uh, ISF? Uh, come on now, let's just coach him up. But they'll get it. Okay, you just want them out fast in the coverage, rock and roll. And I, I could send you some clips here, but it's, again, we would never talk about lanes and all that. It's all relating to where the returner is and, uh, and then compress to him. Wide and locate, compressed, inside shoulder force is all that is. Okay, our, our brick dudes, they're seven yards from the ball. Their, their feet, their heels are on the lava edge. It's hot lava behind you. you. You never step back, ever. You never step back. So we've gone from a hinge style where the person protected the middle brick will stand behind the right brick, gives that snap window, the ball clears, he steps in. We've also done it because our snappers kind of pulled the ball to the right a little bit. We'll go shield right, meaning uh, he, the middle brick will stand with his inside foot, left foot to the outside foot of the snapper. He's just, you know, relating that four inch split from the middle brick. So these, this guy would be here, he'd be here, the left brick, okay, his inside foot's to the outside foot of the center. As soon as the ball snap, he closes the window down. 
Okay, so it's kind of two ways to do it. Uh, we call it shield right, shield left. Uh, I don't think we've ever done shield left, but now as soon as the ball's kicked, he shifts over and the middle brick again is really in the inside edge of the A gap. That's the center of the, the kick. So that's different from when he's right behind center, stays right there and everything, everything is centered up. So depending on how, where your snapper is or he's consistent putting it right down, like an arrow, man, just puts it right down the line. Then I would go the hinge style. But if we got an overload side, we want to move that punter to the overload side a little bit. That was automatic. It was overload right, shield right. That's the sideline call in a backed up punt scenario. Okay, but we keep all our normal splits. You know, everybody gets a little geeked out and compresses everything down. But again, if you start moving everything tighter, reducing the splits because you're backed up, you're bringing the coverage and the, the rush closer to the launch point now. Distance equals time. Distance equals time. And I'm telling you, it looks a little scary down there with six foot splits and your punter is backed up in your own end zone, but we're overloaded and the protection system doesn't shift. We're just overload right, shift right, and we'll get this dog out. And it's worked. Honestly, guys, it's worked. Okay, so there we go. So your punter's at 14. These guys are at seven. Launch points at nine. Never knew back. Punter, always kick to the middle brick always get on his crack <laughs> okay i think that, i think that's fair to say i can say crack uh if the snap takes you offline a little bit you better get your kick line back to the center if, if we have center uh, just regular shield and he caught the ball behind the right shield and he stays on that right shield okay he's exposed himself now to any rush from the right side he's not in the middle and he's brought the launch point over here which brings it closer distance equals time to the coverage guys or the, the rush guys. Coach. So again, if he caught the ball behind the right brick, he better angle himself on his steps to get to the middle brick because that is the protection point. It's right here. Coach. He's got to be behind the middle brick, has to. Uh, it, 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 assuming every time it, and you need to, they're, excuse me, they're coming to block your kick. Okay. And then again, the t technique up here I have it written down here is uh, step flat and lateral to your man, bring your feet, and do not give ground. Make a stand, okay? Strike hands on, close the door. So it's like taking that sliding glass door in your backyard and shut it down. My dogs are about ready to run out, shut it down. Okay, but they got to step flat, gain ground, shut the door. Step flat, gain ground, shut the door. Yeah, based on Rip and Liz and your pre-snap scan, you know who you're supposed to block. Okay, step to that. That's it. That's all it is. Anybody off the LOS is not accounted for in the protection. Nobody on a second level runs a four flat 40 can get from there to there in, in two less than 2.1. So we're okay. We never account for them. But here's the protection system, guys. So if we're rip, rip, kick side, right footed kicker, balanced front. Okay, this is basically five and five. Or you can call this five and four because this backer's off. Okay, he's on the back side of the alignment, okay, left side of the ball and at, at second level. So he's just scanning for fakes and that kind of deal. Okay, and we go scan it, scan it. Okay, and everybody on the line of scrimmage is calling out who they're going to block. I got 37, I got 22. Okay, anybody in the outside of a tight end and a D gap alignment, we don't block him. We're out. That guy is, you know, about 10 yards from the ball. And to get from there to there in 2.1, it cannot happen unless he's an absolute freak of nature. Okay, they'll bring that guy just on quality, as we call it, quality control, checking for fakes. He'll kind of hover down right here, make sure the ball gets kicked, and then he'll go try to get you punter or trail this thing or run to a wall return deal, whatever it is. But these guys are out, okay? Now, if they overloaded this side and he had to step down, we wouldn't touch him. That's okay. So really from C gap and out, you can almost not touch those guys and you're going to be fine. Don't tell them that, okay? Other than the D gap guys, guys, anybody outside the tight ends, we can let those guys rock and roll and just release them into coverage. True snipers. Okay, but my point being, a rip, this is a rip-rip call, that which it tells the first protector, I'm, I'm going right. Okay, it tells the right brick, I'm on the, I'm on the protection side. So middle brick, right brick have one and two. That's it. It's a count. One and two. Right guard has three. Right tackle has four. Tight end has five. Okay, we all blocked up. Okay, 
So two, two in the A gap, kick side, put them on the shield. They can run right to the shield and sacrifice those guys into it. It's Thump City. Stay in the roller coaster. Hold your ground. Stay square. Stay with your wingman. Okay, and get ready to take it. Okay, get ready to take it. Do not turn shoulders. You have to stay square. You turn anything, you get off center. Your hips, your shoulders, you've opened creases. And believe me, when we've designed blocks for this, we're trying to get these guys to turn their shoulders and crease a dude through there. Okay, you'll get guys coming through this A gap for you in the shield or get him to step in tight, bring another element and come right through his outside pick and try to get it. That's how we've tried to block some things. These dudes stay square, can't do it. Okay, so one and two go to the shield. Right guard's got a three, so he's got an out hot here. Four is out here, right guard. He's got an out hot. So two on the shield, out hot, out hot. Now that means now, rip, rip, call. Okay, PP's going right. That means the left brick, there's your count. Left brick has one, left guard has two, left tackle has three, tight end has four. Okay, your sniper. Okay, so that's all it is. It just changes the count by one. So this, I call him a tackle here. That's like UPS. They just take the D tackles and just run their big, massive 280 bodies into our shields just for fun. <laughs> okay. It's a big honor, by the way, in, in the slice crew to be the right brick because you're kind of going to get get your lunch attempted to get handed to you almost every kick. It's awesome, man. Love that right brick. We've had guys at senior banquets that were all conference defensive ends. Hi, I, uh, I'm uh, Doug Owens, and I'm a right brick. Yeah, the whole team goes crazy. I'm a legion of dude. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Again, this guy was an all-conference DN for us. Kind of a cool deal. Anyways, I just I started tearing up. I really, I started tearing up. Anyways, okay. So again, it's just a math deal, guys. You know, and if this buck, the buck or the linebacker walks up pre-snap, that's okay. I still got one. I'll take two. I got three. I got four. So that's a this guy's off, so we don't account for him. There's our one left brick, and he's yelling it. I got 67. Okay, left guard's got two. It's rip, rip. He's on the left side. I got two. I got 33. Left tackle, I got three. Okay, because it's rip, rip. Okay, I got 17. Okay, left tight end's going. I got four. Four's outside of me. I'm out. I'm not even going to hot him for that guy to go from here, who's 12 yards from the ball, to get all the way to there. It can't happen. We don't even touch him. Uh, you know, if we have any little off snap or little hiccup, giddy up with our kicker, yeah, that can get a little scary. But in any protection, and I tell these guys, you watch pro punt, NFL is 100% pro punt. Every punt that goes off, returns or not, it looks like, geez, six more inches, one more arm length, that ball was going to get blocked in almost every punt. Okay, so you're, you're riding the edge, man. You're at the tipping point every time you're punting the ball. But we've had years that our snap and get off is so good, everybody's postured up for returns. They're centered up. They're in the chest. Okay. Uh, what we call PPP, you know, pre um, pound, post, and press um, on punt returns. And we know that. So if this right guard, even though it's rip, rip, he's got four, but this guy is right up in his chest. He's not hot and he's out. He knows he's not, my, my assignment is not rushing. He's out, and we've seen it in film, okay? So that's that's release techniques, dip and rips, uh, swipes, you know, bat hand and swip, you know, get get shoulders off, get reduced surface, all that stuff. And, again, a lot, of these, a lot of these are DB guys for us. I get our wide receiver coach, teach, teach them some release deal, basically dip and rip, but I don't want them dancing at the line of scrimmage because the more time they're at the line of scrimmage, Okay, the more time they're buying for geography down there to return the ball. We've got to get these kids out. Okay, so that that that's it, man. That that's how we do it. We we do a lot of hot technique. Again, a kid to just push right or push left and stay square, shut the door, hands on torso. I'm telling you, some kids to, for I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. They can't do it. They all drop hip. And if they get off square and drop hip, you open the gate. Some of you defensive guys or offensive guys, you know, kick slide tackles, protection, build the horseshoe and all that. They understand that. Get to your set point. Well, set point is flat on the line of scrimmage. You don't have a blocking element or the ball gets snapped and he starts to pedal back because he's working into a return deal. Out. Go. Okay. You Most of the time you, you beat the blocking element with speed. 
Okay, so that's really how it works. You see a lot of different formations and overloads and double splits. Sometimes we'll split both these guys out. So they'll take two or three out. That means there's only two in here. They're on the, they're on, there's only three in here. If this guy goes out and goes out and they got a cover down with them, you're still rip, rip, one and two on the brick, right? Gago has three, okay? And, and, and any, any and all variations, okay? We've done a lot of different things, but there's really about three formations that will We'll just go, we're on the right hash, we'll go split left, okay? We'll go double split right, still call it rip rip. We'll go overload left, split left. So we'll take him, put him to the left and split him, but still call it rip rip, okay? So, so cause one and two are on the bricks, he'd have three, he'd have four if they're gonna be sound in their cover downs. Okay, and then you just start scheming it up and you can figure out, hey man, we just do the count, we're easy. Because I've seen shield guys, one side's a zone, one side's a man. Uh, we play, I'm not going to say who it is, but we play a conference opponent. Every time they snap, all these guys step out. They all step out. I mean, irregardless of the numbers, the count. And uh, I'll just have to say, I think we've used that against them in some block um, efforts. And yeah, we've got them a couple of times. So our system, you know, they put three dudes in this A gap. Linfield style. It's still rip rip. That means your hot is in. And they're, they're going to be sound. A guy in a B gap, your four is in. They may keep him outside. They better if they're going to have an edge of the defense. And he would just be out. It's a pile of bodies in here, but protecting that kick side obviously is the critical element. So that's how we've done shield. Um, uh, again, from a practice standpoint, you know, punt was always every Tuesday for us, always. Okay. And then, you know, snappers and specialists are working all week long in different other segments as well. Special teams is going on. This is what's posted in the locker room. This was spring ball 19. This was, uh, you know, the, you know, April 25th segments, 14, 15. So it's just a 10 minute segment in, in spring ball pride work, hot release, wide, locate, compress inside shoulder force kickers, punters, pop up, kick off, kick it off to returners during that segment. Okay, and then we always say sort of the base technique stuff sitting here with, because, uh, you know, it's about efficiency, guys. You only got so much time to practice, and you got seven ons and inside run combined or how that works, but I'm always telling slice guys, guys, work your techniques. Some of you guys need to work hot stuff, PPP stuff. Our spring backs and our kick return guys, work those techniques, okay, in off times. You know, you may be the third deep in the wide receiver crew. You're not, you're not even on the script today for seven on. So while your ones and twos are doing our 10 minute spring ball seven on, you threes and fours who aren't going to get a lot of reps. Yeah, mental reps, your old coordinator, receiver coach, but man, you could be at the back of the line doing springs, doing hots, that kind of deal to get some extra work, you know, repetition, building that muscle memory, all that good stuff. So that's happening too. Hey, coach. Yeah. Hey, while you're getting that set up, have you ever had your, I mean, uh, from, from your shield footwork, have you ever had them shuffle one way or another, or is it just steps? We, when we're doing like individual and we're teaching it. Yeah. We'll have everybody up. You know, I've, I've already posted ones and twos and maybe threes. A lot of times it's, you know, I just go through our 40 list and go on, okay, if you're not on the front page of our 30 guys listed, because you're like four, seven, eight or faster, you're on the first page, you know, fastest to slowest kind of deal. Uh, you're not going to get on pride team. <laughs> I can't have four, eight, four, nine guys running long field. Can't do it. There there's always that nifty guy, savvy kid always seems to show up at the ball, but he tested at a four, nine, one, but Holy smokes. What's this guy's deal. I'm going to put him at my left tackle. Uh, to me, the, the most critical guy is your right guard and your right tackle those got to be prime time protection guys and coverage guys uh left side they're not as critical in protection i would never tell them that but they're very critical on on uh, coverage and then your your three shield guys i mean it was about three years ago i i i had one shield and i had two other kids that just i'll be honest with you weren't tough enough for it. they gotta be tough kids man they're because once or twice a game they're gonna bring their best, most athletic four or five guys in those A gaps, and here it comes, and they're fearless, and they've been coached all week. You're going to blow up this left left brick dude because we've seen on tape he's soft, and you just can't have that guy. I almost got out of shield punts. Like, I don't have a shield this year. I don't have, 
Usually it's a DN linebacker. I've never, you know, some, they just put three big old blotto O-line guys. That's distance equals time or size equals space just to absorb it all. But it happens maybe twice a year that those shield guys, okay, when they run into their coverage lanes, wide, locate, compress, they're like the third level of the coverage element when the shield guys get out because they're all standing there until the ball is thumped that they actually have to make a tackle. And once or twice a year, we got a game saver from our left brick. Game saver. Every now and then, our center. Okay, I didn't even mention that. I should have. The snapper is not not in protection at all. He snaps and he goes. He's going yeah. to the nose of the returner, make him go east and west, get into the leverage, the inside shoulder force guys, and that's it. And every now and then, that guy will make a tackle. But Wyatt Winkle for us, I think he had 43 snaps last year. Not one tackle. Not one. But the snaps were good. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, 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 that's the key thing. You know, I just want to, you know, you're not here to make a tackle. You're not here to step hot and be in protection. You just get your butt out. Okay. Your whole focus, your whole life is getting that ball 0. 0.7, 0. 0.8, 0. 0.88 back to that, that Correct. punter. That's it, dude. Okay. I'll just show you this, guys. Uh, two years ago, uh, you probably wouldn't have known this. I don't know if it happens out in Ohio. Maybe we had some fires and, we had bad, bad air, and they weren't letting anybody outside. So we got a chance to go practice at the University of Washington in their indoor facility. Now, we had to be there at 7 o'clock in the morning. The Central Washington Division II program here was coming in after us. So we got about 90 minutes. So we got all these great tape angles that UW has, you know, all their video porches and screens, eyes, eyes in the sky kind of deal. But this was one of our first installs of Shield Punt. So we're in a rip-rip call. These are scout kids up. Coach Sparks here, Coach Coach Henderson here. That's me right there. Holy smokes. Okay, and then uh, Coach Coop. But here's our shield. So this is standard shield, the hinge style. Okay, so here's the count. Okay, as I mentioned, this is kick side, rip-rip. Two in the A-gaps, they're on the brick. Right guard has three. Right tackle has four. So they put two in the B-gaps. I don't have a kid out here. Okay, they probably should be if they're going to be sound. Otherwise, we're going to run around your edge here with, with lead blockers, just lead sweep, really. If we get inside element, that's an alert call. Okay, but his five is inside in the C-gap. So he's going to hot down. He'll hot down. He actually hots out. So these two will shut the door here. Okay, we, um, we call that a trio call. Let's say, uh, let me say this, guys. If there were one in the A-gap and two in the B-gap, the right guard and the right brick would switch, okay? So we don't want to get – there's two in the B gap. We don't want to get all the way to three and let him run through him. We'll just put him on two and give three to the right brick, okay? I don't remember why, but we called that a trio call. Hey, trio, trio. But in pre-snap scan, scan it, scan it. Everybody's going through their protection call, just yelling out the number they're going to block. Lock it. Ready. Now, now the snap is on the punter, buried up. You know, don't get it on the same cadence to mess up their get off. But you can see this thing fit up. Okay, so one and two are on the bricks. He's got three. He's down hots to four, down hots to five. Okay, uh, this is the backside now. He's got one, two, three. There's his fours outside my shoulder. He'd be out. But here's what it looks like. Yeah, you can tell we're at teaching speed here. We're just fitting everything up. Uh, middle brick, who's the person protector, he's making the call. Scan it, scan it, lock it, ready. Ball snaps, he steps in, the shield's all squared up, ready to rock. Coach Henderson coaches those guys, great job. You can see the fits, and you don't step out. Every now and then, we'll let the right or left brick never move their post foot, their inside foot, but they can step out a bit. But you never step to your blocking element the ball's going to get kicked right here, and you cannot step out. If this guy's got width, he will come to you. If he wants to step out, he'll never get to there. So just stay with your wingman. Stay sound. That's the whole concept of shield. They're coming to you, okay? And that's it, okay? You see it all fit up. But see this kid? That's pretty good. That's step flat, gain ground, shut the door, right tackle. Step flat, gain ground. He opened hip a little bit. Okay, I'm sure you got coached up, squared up. Don't don't drop hip on that. Now you're you're the door is opening. Okay, I think there's one more on here. Yeah, here we go. Okay, just the same scenario, but now now we've got uh, 
one B gap, one C gap. So in the count, one and two are on the bricks. His three is right here. His four is right here. Yeah, I would tell him pre-snap, you can wiggle out a little bit. You can wiggle out a little bit. And if he wiggles out a little bit, distance equals time. Okay, you see the fits? All fits up. Hey, look at that right, right guard. That's not bad. A little bit of a dance kind of deal, but he's got a two stride to get to him, staying square. He's blocking him plenty. He'd be, bam, hands on torso, bam, now he's out. Okay, look at the right tackle. That's pretty good. That's my man, Joseph. Step flat, stay square, hands on torso. I'm out. Wide and locate, compress. Pretty good. Okay, right tackle. He's on just release work. There it is. Good. Little, little jab and go. Okay, you can see left side, back side, rip, rip call. One is, there's two in the A gaps here on the left. This is what we showed him. So one is right here, left brick. Two would be the left guard. That's a down hot. Three is left tackle. That's a down hot. Four is outside of him. Go. Don't We don't worry about him. Just go. Looks like Coach Daly's coaching him up. Now, he ended up getting a little piece, but he could have just gone. There's the down hot. That's his three. You can see it all fit up. Boom. And if our punters punt right here, we are doggone sound. Okay. And you guys know, if you ever done shield punt or go from pro punt, whatever you were using, now they got what we call pro shield. They're kind of using a little bit of both. Uh, same concept though, but and then you go to shield, it is a fire drill. There's elbows and knees and dudes all over the place, but just look at the shield. Everything is good in this world right here. The ball is going to get out, wide locate, compress. He's the right side, locates third level, left side, third level, middle break, go to the ball. Okay, that's how that works. It all fits up really, really well. Okay, coach, that's it, man. I did have the, uh, you know, I think you had that before. If anybody wanted to get communicate with me, that's my numbers. I think you had that slide before. Yep. And I'll, I'll put it all, in, all in the bottom. Of, again. Gosh, I'm over like 2,500 follows now. Gosh, I'm getting popular out there in the <laughs> social media world. And in my email right there, and that's actually my cell phone. If anybody wants to talk more about this stuff, or I'd be happy to send some of this PowerPoint stuff. I've got kick returns and kick coverage and all that good stuff on here.